Hello, today we're gonna build a solar node for Meshtastic. Meshtastic has been growing fairly rapidly and on my TikTok page, I've noticed that there's thousands and thousands of people that have been interested in Meshtastic, which is wonderful. Full disclaimer, I make Meshtastic nodes and I sell them on my website, but my goal is to convince you to not spend your money on my website and instead build it yourself for a few reasons. The primary reason is because I want you to learn about Meshtastic and the best way to learn is to dive deep into it and figure the stuff out on your own. It's a fairly longer video. Um, I try to be as detailed as possible. That way there's less questions and more uh, just skipping around and seeing what you need to do. All the parts are down below. They are affiliate links. So I appreciate you if you purchase them, if you use them, if not perfectly fine. Um, and yeah, have fun with it. Meshtastic is growing and I'm glad that it is. So yeah, if you like this type of stuff, please consider liking this video and subscribing. Thank you very much, enjoy. All right, so here's everything that you would need for this project. Let's go over everything in detail. You will need a junction box. The one that I use will be linked in the description. Along with that, I have these 3D printed brackets. If you can 3D print them, the file will be down below. If you wanna just purchase them, they will be also below. A PD trigger, this converts 12 volt to USB-A and USB-C. A USB-A to USB-C cable, this will go into your box and connecting to the PD trigger. You want to make sure that it's too long so it doesn't take up a whole bunch of your box. 6,000 milliamp hour battery, you don't need to use the 6,000, you can go smaller, but I recommend the 6. Your actual mesh-tastic WizBlock node. A Velcro strap, uh, plastic, make sure it's not metal. A little bit of uh, shrink wrap or electrical tape. If you don't want to buy shrink wrap or if you don't have any, electrical tape will be fine. All purpose sealant and adhesive. Uh, JB Weld is the, the one that I use. A step bit, a drill of some sort. Antenna tape. If you don't have antenna tape, electrical tape will work. However, this will definitely be a lot better. The problem is if this is your only build, it gets a little pricey some solder, some resin, wire strippers, a solar panel. This is the one that I recommend. The solar panel will come with a cable that you will end up cutting. You'll see it in the video. And that's about it. There's a good amount of stuff. If you don't have things, see if you can borrow it from other people. Oh, you will also need a soldering iron of some sort and a heat gun or if you don't want to use a heat gun you can use a lighter to just go and melt the shrink wrap very simple and everything will be down in the description so let's get started with the build by prepping our box unwrap it and take out the internal grid and the two screws make sure you keep the two screws because we'll need it later for attaching our node we're going to be making two holes in the case itself using our step bit. We're going to be using one for the antenna mount and one for the plastic grommet that will be feeding a power cable from the solar panel to our node. Make sure that you measure out the center of the boxes, the top of the box and the bottom of the box. That's where we're going to be drilling. When drilling, be very careful. Start with a small hole, carefully make the holes, measure make the holes measure until the size is correct you want a nice and tight snug fit in my case it is that line right there we're going to actually do it twice one for the antenna and one for the little rubber grommet take your time make sure that you are careful with it because you can only make this hole once you can make it bigger you can't make it any smaller clean up your station and now we have our antenna mount. Very simple. What we want to do is we want to go and add some clear silicone to it around it. Once it dries, it'll make a very nice and tight waterproof fit for your antenna. What's important about making these holes is we try to keep everything nice and waterproof. Less is more, but make sure that you carefully go and apply the silicone around the connector. Once your silicone is applied, add it to your box and then put the three rings or two rings and one nut 
back on there. Make sure that you have a nice and tight fit. Sometimes you might need to use a pair of pliers or your wire strippers to tighten it up. We have our plastic grommet. This will go and allow us to have a nice and watertight seal when we add a cable from the solar panel to your node. Once again, this has a rubber seal. So all you need to do is tighten it up and you're good to go. Once it's tightened, it's time to go and prepare our Meshtastic node. This is a whisk block by Rockland. We're gonna go and attach it into the enclosure. If you don't have the enclosure, no worries. You don't have to buy it. You can 3D print it, or you can just leave your equipment as is. Attach the Bluetooth and the included 915 megahertz antenna as we update it. We wanna make sure that we flash the firmware. It's simple, select your device, Make sure you get the latest stable version, click flash, continue, download it, save it somewhere, connect your node, or copy and paste the installation files into your node. At that point, you're ready. Plug in a USB cable into your um, node and start attaching it to the box itself. The USB will then be used to charge up your node connecting to the solar. Once again, take your time. At this point, you can disconnect the, uh, the provided antenna and connect the IPX connector to your node from your box. Make sure that it is actually in because sometimes it's a little uncomfortable to attach. You can then go and attach the Bluetooth antenna also. Our enclosure is now ready and it's time to move on and get our cables set up. So your solar panel is going to come with this largely spooled cable. This connects your panel to whatever device you have. In our case, we're going to go and cut it a little bit and trim the cable in order for it to go and attach to our meshtastic node. So figure out a length that you want to separate your solar panel from your meshtastic node. In our case, about three feet. We're going to go then and feed that cable through that grommet. Once the cable is fed, measure out about two inches and we're gonna use our wire strippers to go and cut a piece off. Make sure that you're only cutting the shielding off and you have two exposed wires. A strip of a few inches, that way we can go get the positive negative cable and prepare to solder it to our PD trigger. A PD trigger will convert 12 volts over to um, USB-C or USB-A. This will then go and connect to our node. We use PD triggers because they're a smart system that goes and regulates voltage, or at least it's smarter than just connecting 12 volts directly to a node. It will negotiate the power and make sure that your node gets the correct amount of power from your solar panel. Please be careful when soldering. If you've never done it before, consider asking somebody to help you out. But you just need to go red to red, a little bit of flux, I use liquid flux and then just solder it down. Make sure that you do not um, solder any other pieces of the board. Same goes for the negative and for the positive. At that point, snip it a little bit. I use a little bit of shrink wrap. You can wrap yours up in electrical tape, whatever you wanna do. This way the board is not touching your meshtastic node. And there's my kid. And it's almost midnight. Once it's wrapped up, we can carefully go put it into our box and we are ready to close up the node and put our battery in. So the enclosure that I have uh, also has a little cage for your battery or little caddy, just so everything's organized. Tidy up your cables, put that little battery tray on and I always use Velcro straps to hold the battery so when you open up your node, your battery does not fall out. And at that point, your node is actually complete. So, almost. Most bat batteries come with uh, the polarity reversed. You have to be very mindful of that. So what I do is I use a box cutter to replace the little connectors. I think they're JST connectors. And I just swap them around. That way I don't have to re-solder any wires or do anything like that. But be very careful with the polarity of your node. Your battery might be proper polarity and you won't even have to do this. Tidy everything up, throw a few silica packets, don't eat them, and you are all set. 
At that point, you can get some antenna tape. Uh, this is for a customer, so I'm gonna just wrap it up for them. Uh, take the antenna tape and you're gonna wrap it around your antenna to make a nice watertight seal. This way, water is not going through the antenna connector into your mesh-tastic node. And here I'll just demonstrate what connecting it looks like. Where I am going and screwing in, that's where your antenna tape will go. You can have a very nice seal there. So, the solar panel. The solar panel comes with, I believe, an 8,000 or a 12,000 milliamp hour battery. That battery will go and be charged up first by the solar panel, and then the solar panel will act as a power bank and charge up your node, and charge up the battery, actually, that's in your node. We connect it to the centerpiece with the provided cable, the thicker cable out of the two or three that we have there. Just like that, you can plug it in. At that point, you will be passing power. And there you have it. You build your first Meshtastic node or just another Meshtastic node. So if you made it this far, please consider liking this video, uh, commenting on your experience, and you know maybe subscribe if you like this type of stuff. This is my first time making this type of video, so I appreciate you watching. If I forgot anything, please comment down below. I would love to answer any questions. And if you are experienced, maybe answer some questions also, especially if I forgot some step. I hope I didn't. Thank you for watching and take care.